The Marvel superhero Daredevil is the story of a mild-mannered lawyer named Matt Murdock who is blind but can see through the power of echolocation. I'm sorry, shouldn't this be Batman's thing? There's nobody over there. Anyway, in the comics and the TV shows, it gives him a, a supernatural ability to perceive the world around him, and he uses that to fight crime and to hook up with She-Hulk. Well done, sir. Well, it might sound impossible to believe, but this is an actual thing that some blind people can do. Maybe not the fighting crime and She-Hulk stuff, but the echolocation, yeah. One great example is Daniel Kish. Uh, this is a guy who makes clicking sounds with his tongue when he's walking around or with a cane, and he kind of uses what he hears coming back to him to interpret the space around him. He can even ride a bike and navigate through his neighborhood this way. And this isn't just some like superhuman ability that only he can do, he actually teaches this to blind children. Uh, he does it through this organization called World Access for the Blind. And this of course is a method of seeing that many animal species use like the aforementioned bat. Animals definitely have a different way of perceiving the world. And we've kind of learned over the years how to use their abilities to heighten our own perception. So today, let's take a look at some of the weirdest animal senses that you just don't have. You know, sometimes I get why some people hate science. I do. I get it. Because it's constantly revealing things that we can't see and reminding us of how narrow our perception is. From small things like bacteria and viruses and atoms to gigantic things like galaxies and dark matter and your mom. The fact is we can see, hear, touch, sense, smell, whatever, just a fraction of the world around us. Visible light is the most obvious answer. You know, we, we know that light is just a small part of the entire electromagnetic spectrum, right? But the narrowness of that spectrum is, is even more amazing when you think about it because technically the size of the wavelengths in the electromagnetic spectrum, they go from infinitely small to infinitely huge. And out of that, infinity, the range of what we can see is only 320 nanometers wide. Luckily, we got this here gelatinous blob that can brainificate real good, and we've been able to construct instruments that go beyond our sense of sight as well as our other senses to give us a more complete picture of the world. But many animal species in the world don't need to brainificate. They can sensificate things that we can't. Here are some of the weirdest examples. Since we've already been talking about it, let's start with echolocation. Bats are famous for it, as well as dolphins and other toothed whales who produce sounds to help them navigate. And these sounds are loud. Like, they have to travel really long distances and carry enough energy to bounce all the way back to the animal and still be heard. Heard by a sense of hearing that's obviously very, very, very sensitive. So, that actually raises a really interesting question. How can they make such loud sounds, mere centimeters, even millimeters away from these really sensitive ears without actually hurting them? Well, bats anyway, it turns out, uh, they actually have a mute button in their inner ear. It's a muscle that pushes against one of the inner ear bones to keep it from vibrating when it chirps. Uh, thus protected, they're able to pinpoint prey from a distance of up to 10 meters. Sperm whales do the same thing, but their echolocation range is closer to 500 meters. Norwals, that are basically a toothed whale with one really, <laughs> really long tooth, um, they can actually echolocate vertically to find open water in regions that are covered with ice. This is important because they have to surface so that they can breathe. Echolocation can provide a sort of x-ray vision as well, uh, especially underwater. As I'm sure you've heard your whole life, we are 60-something percent water, so if a dolphin's echolocation signals are traveling through water, then they can travel through you. A little bit. Dolphins use this trick to find fish that are hiding in loose sand, but I think the craziest thing about dolphin echolocation is that they might, might, be kind of telepathic. There's a long-standing theory that dolphins can recreate the images they see with their echolocation using their own mouth clicks and pulses. If that's true, they might be able to transmit images to another dolphin. At this point, the theory is highly speculative. Um, you know, it's kind of hard to brain scan one dolphin, let alone two. But they have been observed communicating with each other using the same vocalizations they echolocate with, so maybe? But seriously, how cool is that? I mean, like, instead of having to describe something that you saw with, you know, words or trying to draw it to somebody, you could just blast sounds at someone and they just see it. And who knows, maybe one day we could brainificate a device that would be able to decipher their clicks into a, a hologram or something that we could see. That'd be cool. So if echolocation is seeing with sound, tremor sense might be hearing with touch. So I mentioned the ability of elephants to communicate with low-frequency vibrations before. Um, the more highbrow of you might recall my video about the brown note. Well, what I didn't catch in my research way back then was that elephants can actually hear these vibrations through their feet. As we all know, sound waves travel faster through solids than through air. So while elephant calls can travel great distances over the air, they can travel even further and faster through the ground. 
So yeah, elephants developed really sensitive feet that can hear through the ground. Yeah, researchers have actually seen elephants kind of striking poses that allow for better tactile listening. They'll sub sort of pause and then sometimes raise a leg or touch a leg or a toe to the ground just for a moment to kind of listen. And this gives them a little extra time to prepare for a threat. Um, for example, if they hear another elephant warn of a predator with their ears, they'll just flee and get out of there because they, they know they don't have much time. But if that warning comes through the dirt, they'll figure that they've got a little bit of extra time and just kind of huddle close together instead. The tremor sense works through clusters of specialized nerves around the feet. These are processed in the same parts of the brain that process touch, but some of the vibrations are also carried all the way through the skeletal system to the inner ear, which processes it as sound. This is kind of how bone conducting headphones work, except it's conducting all the way from your feet. And there are some correlations that can be found in the brains of deaf and deaf blind people. Deaf blind people have the ability to sort of hear finger movements because their brains have moved that processing to the auditory module of the brain. And because you and me baby ain't nothing but mammals, elephants use this form of communication to find mates. Sort of a, an underground tremor based tinder. Trembler? Sounds like a serial killer dating app. Next up is heat sense. So obviously we can all sense heat. Um, one of the very first things that any parent teaches a kid is not to touch a hot stove. Or in my case, it's a lesson that you learn on your own. Once. Well, the reason that we feel heat is because the signals that travel through ion channels in our nerves. Now, we have different channels for different sensations, and one heat sensing channel that we have is called TRPV1. By the way, the reason that we feel heat when we eat chili peppers and that kind of thing is because the capsaicin in the chili peppers um, activate that same pathway, that TRPV1 pathway. And if you've ever wondered why mint feels cold, it's because it activates a different receptor called TRPV8. TRPV8, as you might have guessed, detects cold. So there you go. And these ion channels do more than just send signals to the brain, it can also activate your immune system. In fact, some studies have shown that activating that TRPV1 channel with capsaicin can actually kind of prime your immune system to fight cancer. It's complicated and not all the studies agree, but it does hint at some more health benefits of spicy foods, which is pretty cool. Anyway, when it comes to sensing heat, the human TRPV1 channels have a threshold of 43 degrees Celsius, or 109 degrees Fahrenheit. Obviously, that's useful for preventing burns, but animals with a more precise heat sense find it even more useful. Take vampire bats, for instance. They have extra sensitive TRPV1 receptors in their nose. Those activate at 30 degrees Celsius. This is cooler than the temperature of blood. What this means is that they can literally see blood vessels underneath the skin. It's kind of like a natural stud finder. Blood finder. <laughs> Certain snakes also use heat sensing to find food. Vipers, pythons, and boas have pits in their faces that are equipped with ion channels to map thermal radiation, basically allowing them to see in the dark. And their TRPV1 ion channels can detect temperatures of 28 degrees Celsius and higher. They basically have predator vision, which is appropriate because they are predators, but hey, now you know how to be invisible to a snake. Mud bath. Now for a really cool one, electrosensing. Electric shocks are uh, annoying to human beings mostly, but some animals use electricity to see in ways that we can't. Sharks are a famous example. In 1935, a scientist observed a shark reacting negatively to a rusty wire. Uh, this reaction occurred even when the shark was blindfolded, which by the way, apparently, you can blindfold sharks. Anyway, a biologist and physicist named Adrianus Kalman worked out that sharks and other animals, like fish, can actually sense electromagnetic fields. This sense was eventually pinned down to these organs in their snout called ampullae of Lorenzini. These are basically pores filled with a, a kind of jelly, and then nerves in those pores respond to changes in electrical potential, which then helps them to find prey in murky water. The Ulm salamander does this in a similar way. Um, Ulms are essentially blind, so they just use electrosensing to locate obstacles in their environment. Another animal that uses electrosensing is the duck-billed platypus, because of course it does, just throw that on the massive pile of weird things around the platypus. And finally, bees are thought to be able to sense the electrical fields of flowers. Yeah, bees can tell the difference between real flowers and fake flowers because of their electrical charge, and they can also make a flower positively charged, which kind of works as a dinner bell for other bees. Bees, by the way, are the first animal that scientists have noticed that have used electrosense in dry air. Um, all the other animals that we're talking about here are underwater, or in areas of high humidity at the very least. And some think that this opens the door to other non-bee insects to have a similar sense, but research is ongoing. And while we're talking about bees, another cool thing they can do is they have built-in natural compasses. Bees can orient themselves to the Earth's magnetic field thanks to granules of iron in their abdomens. This gives them the ability to accurately navigate up to 12 kilometers from the hive. The blind salamander I mentioned earlier can also orient itself to the Earth's magnetic field. Some bacteria can too. And then there's the birds. Some bird species migrate thousands of miles every year. 
Um, the bar-tailed godwit, for instance. It, it travels 30,000 kilometers in a trip that takes it from Alaska to New Zealand and back. So, like, how? How do they navigate that? This gets weird. There are some studies that are suggesting that they do it through quantum entanglement. Yeah. Okay, so, bear with me here. There's a type of protein called a cryptochrome. And cryptochromes are known to create pairs of entangled particles when it interacts with light. Well, when they create these particles, the spin state of these particles is affected by magnetic fields. And they found several types of cryptochromes in the eyes of birds. So, in theory, in theory, the Earth's electromagnetic fields could possibly impact the spin state of these entangled pairs. And those changes could be detected by the retinal nerves, which would allow the birds to effectively see the Earth's magnetic fields. I imagine it would be like seeing a, a superhighway in the sky that's made up of auroras all the time. What's even crazier is that human eyes contain more than enough cryptochrome to actually do this ourselves. What we lack is the, is the neural hardware to interpret these magnetic effects and possibly a chemical that activates the cryptochrome. But it's thought that birds do have that. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's still a bit speculative, but it's an interesting answer to a big natural mystery. Okay, we know that dogs have a great sense of smell, but it turns out that dogs can actually diagnose disease. This is amazing. Dogs have five times as many olfactory receptors as we do, and their brains have 40 times the smell processing power. And this is why dogs can be trained to sniff out scent trails, bomb materials, a bag of weed stuff to weigh down in your backpack, or so I'm told. Well, since 1989, scientists have been studying the ability of dogs to smell cancer. They've been able to correctly detect everything from skin, lung, and other cancers from urine samples, and they can also smell cancer on a patient's breath. The rates of detection tend to vary from study to study, but they're routinely above the 50% that you would expect if it was random chance. An August 2021 study reported lung cancer detection rates of 78% from breath and 87.8% from urine. When breath and urine samples were used together, the sniffer dogs had a 97.6% detection rate. According to a research group working on this called In Situ, training dogs to detect cancer is actually pretty complicated because the smells are made up of around like 4,000 volatile organic compounds uh, compared to, you know, maybe one or two that a bomb sniffing dog is to pick up. Studies are still ongoing. Dogs aren't like used as diagnostic tools in hospitals just yet because, you know, well, CT scans are still way more accurate and, uh, well, let's just be honest, there's more money to be made with it. In situ recommends teams of five highly trained dogs to detect cancer. Um, I'm not sure if the whole team of highly trained dogs would cost less than a CT scan, but well, maybe. I find this really interesting, but I'm not really sure exactly, you know, like how it would work in practice. I mean, if you're at the point that you're, you know, going to the doctor because you're worried you might have cancer, um, you're probably going to want a definite answer at that point more than the word of a dog. But if we can isolate and detect some of the chemicals that dogs are responding to, we might be able to include smell samples as part of a, a regular physical, you know, to just increase the chance of catching diseases before the symptoms show up. Uh, there's actually a video in the way on this exact topic. Um, it's a thing that's in the works and uh, no, it's, it's really, really cool. So yeah, um, the fact that dogs can smell cancer, super interesting. And last on our list, we come to an animal with the best sense of taste in the entire animal kingdom. And the reason it has such an amazing sense of taste is because it basically tastes with its whole body. The answer, a catfish. Catfish, yeah, I really didn't expect that one when I started this. A catfish is basically a giant tongue with fins. Its body is covered with 175,000 chemoreceptors, which are basically taste buds. For comparison, you have around 10,000 on your tongue. What it doesn't have all over its body are scales, which is kind of weird for a fish, but catfish is a weird animal. The chemoreceptors are especially packed into those whiskers that give it its name. Those whiskers are actually called barbells, by the way, which makes a lot less sense to me than whiskers, but whatever. It uses these barbells and the chemoreceptors all over its body to navigate and hunt down live prey in murky water where there's not much light. Yeah, catfish have a reputation as being carrion eaters, but they mostly eat live prey, like insects and small fish. And sometimes, people. From 1998 to 2008, there were reports out of India of a man-eating catfish. The legend has it that the fish got a taste for human flesh after consuming a body that was um, a leftover remains from a seaside funeral pyre, but uh, who knows? I mean, maybe it got a taste from just sniffing somebody's leg when they were wading through the water. Either way, there are three known cases with eyewitnesses of people getting dragged into the water by a giant catfish, and their remains were never found. That is a thing that happened. <laughs> Siri, cancel my noodling trip. Okay, so all this is cool, but um, what does that mean to us? How can we use these super senses to our advantage? 
Well, I've talked about the cancer sniffing dogs, but there are other things scientists are using, like echolocation to find cracks in structural beams. Yeah, finding hairline cracks in the supports of an oil rig is especially challenging. Um, not only are the cracks underwater, they're usually buried in sand. So yeah, using the example of dolphins hunting fish in the sand, they use echolocation to find fractures that they otherwise wouldn't be able to see. The elephant's ability to hear tremors has possible applications for hearing aids. Yeah, remember how elephants hear partially by bone conduction? Well, modeling elephant ear bones could help improve the clarity of hearing aids that kind of work in a similar way. Heat sensing ion channels are being studied for pain relief. Um, we're actually figuring out how to chemically block those signals thanks to studying the heat pits on snakes. And finally, the tasting powers of catfish have been studied for their insight into animal behavior, especially regarding food. Kind of sounds strange, but studying catfish has actually led to a greater understanding of how different tastes encourage animals and humans to eat a healthy diet. In a way, we're using animal super senses to amplify our own senses, just like all the instruments we've created over the years. I love these stories because it, it just it never it just shows that you never know where a, a breakthrough is going to come from. Like you always hear about these studies where somebody's trying to figure out if snails prefer a Mountain Dew or Sprite or something you know random like that, and you're always like, why are people studying this? This is why because there's always something that you can learn in it, and you never know what problem that's going to fix. And I, for one, think that's pretty cool. Any I missed? Are there any animal senses that you know about that I didn't cover here? Talk about it in the comments. I'd love to hear about it. And hey, you know what would be a really great superpower? The ability to not get hacked. You could be like a, like a digital daredevil, just you know, kicking the crap out of malware and viruses without even looking. Well, you can be exactly that with today's sponsor, NordVPN. NordVPN works by creating a virtual private network that hides your IP address by tricking the network into thinking that you're somewhere else, keeping your information safe and out of the hands of evil villains. Yeah, I don't know about you, I, I basically live off my laptop and the idea that someone might get their hands on it is horrifying. And with NordVPN, I can even protect my laptop from my own stupid self with threat protection. Threat protection works even when your VPN isn't even turned on, protecting your browser from malicious websites, trackers, malware, even intrusive ads. You know, no more clicking the wrong thing and then losing an entire week of work trying to get everything to work right again. Now, I mean, joking aside, online privacy is under more threat than ever, and the best way to protect yourself is with a VPN. So if you haven't taken that leap because you've just been kind of putting it off or you think it's a little too difficult or whatever, give NordVPN a try. Uh, they've been doing this for a really long time. They made it really simple to get started. And if you go to nordvpn.com slash joesky, you get a two-year plan plus four additional months with a huge discount, and they've even got a 30-day money-back guarantee, so if you don't like it for whatever reason, you won't lose a dime. It's totally risk-free. Not signing up, trust me, is very risk expensive. So yeah, give it a try. You got nothing to lose. Once again, it's nordvpn.com slash Joe Scott. I'll put a handy link down in the description. Go check it out. Big thanks to NordVPN for supporting this video and a huge shout out to the Answer Files on Patreon. They're forming an awesome community, keeping the lights on around here and becoming my friends. These are like my people now. Uh, there's some new people that have joined. I need to shout out their names real quick. We've got Gene Sloan, James M. Zweck, uh, Jeff Tobin, Thomas V. Lohmeyer, Michael Jones, Daniel Steffi, David Vaughn, and Matthew Babb. Thank you guys so much. If you'd like to join them, get early access to videos, get access to exclusive live streams, and just be a part of an awesome community, you can go to patreon.com slash answers with Joe. All right, please do like and share this video if you liked it. And if this is your first time here, I'll put a link right here to some other cool animal stuff because I've talked about animals before. Um, or you can check out the sidebar if you're on your browser that have any of the thumbnails of my face on them. Give them a click. If you enjoy them and you're not subscribed, I invite you to subscribe because I come back with videos every Monday. All right, that's it for now. You guys go out there, have an eye-opening rest of the week. Uh, stay safe and I'll see you next Monday. Love you guys. Take care.